Welcome back to the Crochet Crowders with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Twist and Weave Crochet Blanket. This is an easy level project using an eight millimeter size L crochet hook. We actually have only one row to do and then each time you just keep on uh, just doing the same row over and over and over. And the only difference that you see is that there's a striping pattern within the blanket itself. So what we have here is that when we go to start with this pattern we have the instructions but the actual physical to do the rows are literally right here. So proceed the first row and then we continue to do that over and over. So this is considered the moss stitch also known as the granite stitch as well. So let's just take a quick look at this and I can tell you how to change the size. So when we go to look at this you're going to notice that we're going to chain a total of 126 using this particular yarn but if you love this concept so much you can just change the chain count in order to match and the hook size in order to match the yarn. So if you don't wanna use a chunky weight yarn you can just do the same concept but just change the count. So the count is in multiples of two plus two. So you go two, 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 two and when you're satisfied with the width of your chain just add two more and then you will have the balance so that you'll be able to do this. Now sometimes the moss stitches actually has a repeat of two rows. This is only one and I prefer the moss stitch actually done like this so that I don't have to really think about what row I'm on because each row is the same. So what we're doing here is that you're gonna carry the colors loosely up on the side when they're not in use so you don't actually have to cut your yarn and when you're going to do that. So that's something that you can decide to do for yourself. So it says with A work 14 rows first with B two rows, with A two rows and you keep repeating this. So it says repeat from the asterisk three more times. So here's the asterisk and then you keep repeating that three more times and then break A. And then with B you just do these particular colors. So you just have to follow this and just what I would do just don't look at this in panic. Just kind of get your pencil or pen out and just check it off as you go and that's just something that you can do. So I'm gonna show you how to carry up the yarn today and what we have here is that when we go to flip it we're going to be able to just have it up there. So do you see that this big strip right here? That's why we're gonna break the yarn. So we're not gonna drag the yarn of the gray all the way up. So we only just drag the colors up on the side when it's actually just a minimal amount versus a huge swath like that. So just keep that in mind. And you can also trace the outside of this with the border which I'll show you that too. It's not in the pattern but I'll show you that anyway. And that will also help to hide in those colors that you'll be carrying. So without further ado let's grab an eight millimeter size L crochet hook and let's begin. Oh let me tell you about the yarn too. For demonstration purposes I'm using the Bernat Softy Chunky Twist. That's what it's calling for. I actually have a partial ball so I'm gonna use that here on camera. And the other one is the Bernat Softy Chunky so the solid color. So what it's doing is it's bouncing between the two colors so that you have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and it makes magic. Let's begin. As we begin our project I like to use the back hump of a chain but in the moss stitch it creates a space like this. So you have to be conscious of it. So in this tutorial I'm going to, dem I'm going to demonstrate it that way but I wanna give you a second option. So when you go to do your chain how to avoid that is that you end up just like let's say one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this would be how you would like expand it. So just in sets of two. So I'm gonna go four chain from the hook. So I'm gonna count back. So one, two, three and then four. And when I go into that chain I wanna do it so two strands are on top. Usually I turn to the back of the post or the back of the chain and I just grab the one and it's that one that is creating the space. That happens when the yarn is thick like this. So in Bernat Blanket it's typical. So if you put the two strands on top and then single crochet that'll keep that more closed. So chain one and then coming to the next one always keeping the two on the top. So I'm gonna leave it to you on your approach on how you would like to do that. But what this will do is that it will provide a more closed base versus leaving it open like this in the future. So you can decide what you want, want to do. So I'm gonna demonstrate this in just a second. My goal today is to show you how to do the moss stitch and you can follow the color pattern if you wish. And I'll show you some tips along the way as well. So we're gonna create a slip knot to begin and you can either chain 126 if you wanna match exactly what you see which will give you a blanket of about 48 inches wide by 52 inches long. If you would like to customize which I'm just gonna show you a small swatch you chain in sets of two. So one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and you keep doing that until you're satisfied with the width. 
and when you're happy with the width, I've been counting one and two in my head as I've been doing it. And when you're happy with the width, add two more. So one and two and then you will have the balance so that you can begin to do the first row which is the setup row. So let's do the setup row. We only have to do it once and what we're going to do is that we're going to go fourth chain from the hook. So you'd count it back. So one, two, three, four and get the back hump of the chain and you want to single crochet. So what we just created here is the space work. So there's technically three chains there. So there's actually a stitch right in this chain space in the future. So just keep that in mind. We'll talk about that later. So you're just going to just chain one and then you're going to skip the next chain and go to the second over and single crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across. So chain one, skip the next one and single crochet in the next and let's do that all the way across. So put me on hold now and I'll meet you at the end of the row in just a moment and for those that wanna continue along and watch, I'm gonna be there in just a few seconds from now. And if your stitch counts are right, the very last chain after you skip the next one will be the final and that's where the, you're gonna end that row. So you just single crochet and now you can see a little bit almost like a picket fence kind of concept and now you're gonna turn and we're gonna do the first row which is the whole pattern itself. So let's begin. So when we go to start row number two, it's gonna be the same row every each and every time. Even if there's a color change, it's always gonna be the same and you're always gonna start off with the chain two. So one and two and th that will count as a single crochet and a chain one space for the future just so that you're aware. And you wanna come into this very next chain space that you'll run into and single crochet. Then chain one and then just jump to the next chain one space and then chain one and then go to the next chain one space. This is called the moss stitch or the granite stitch and you're just gonna continue that all the way. So you use your fingers and you can ply it open and everything opens up beautifully. And your very last stitch when you go in is going to be the last space before the end and that's gonna be where you're gonna finish. And so that's what it looks like. So to turn your row, you're gonna start and you're gonna repeat what we just learned. So you're going to chain two and you're gonna come to the first space that's available to you. Single crochet and chain one and you're going to come up and single crochet in the next space and chain one. And you'll do that all the way across. You will notice that the tension of this kind of stitch is tight um, uh, tighter than most uh, other stitches out there. So if you start mixing and matching these stitches with other things, you will notice that this will always be tighter. So the very last stitch is in the space where you did that chain two and that's where you're gonna finish. And that will keep you balanced. So I'll show you one more row and then we'll talk about colors. So just chain up two and then come into the next space which is the first one out and then single crochet, chain one and you'll continue to do that all the way across. So just use your fingertips to feel the openings and you'll do that. So I'm gonna show you how to change color and we're gonna carry color. So it says to carry colors at times. I'll show you how that's done and we'll just do that in a second. And we're gonna come to the very last space. That's right here. And you're gonna come in and you're gonna pull like this and you're gonna hold. So leave the two on there and let's grab our other color and we're going to carry this color up into the future. Now when I start the next color, usually I create a slip knot when I go to do it. I don't wanna do it this time but leave a long strand so that you can uh, fasten that in with the tapestry needle which I will demonstrate in a while. So you're just gonna pull that through. So you're gonna finish that stitch with the new color so it's ready to go and just let that other color just sit to the side. I pull it towards me onto my lap so that it's out of my way and then we begin a new row and what you want to do is chain two, just like what you already know. You come into the first space, which you already know, and then chain one, and then jump to the next space, and you're gonna do this all the way across. So if you're carrying colors, the colors can only be carried on the one side. So that means that the row counts when it's asking you to carry are up are an equal number. So it has to be the number two or four, or it could be six, 
whatever is suggesting is there is there. So you just cannot start carrying it on this side because there's nothing to carry to. So you come into the last space, turn and to return back chain two, come to the first space, single. And you keep doing that. So I'm gonna show you how to carry up in a second. So for the rows that says work A for two rows, this would be two rows. Okay, so you come into the very last space right before the end. So you pull through, let this drop and grab that blue back up. And when you grab that blue back up, just tighten it a little bit and pull that up. And so now it's carried up on the side. So you can decide whether you wanna bury that in with the border or not in the future and let this other color just fall to the side. So then start a new one, chain two, and then come into the space and you just do that same granite or moss stitch all the way across. So what I'll do is that this is all you need to do, right? So just follow the pattern for the striping. So I'm gonna give you some options in order to do a border if you would like to do one. Um, just a nice simple border that you can do to cover in the yarns that are the strands that are being carried. And it's not suggested in this pattern but it's something that you can consider if you would like to. So I'll be right back in just a moment and we're going to begin the journey of doing a just simple border just to cover it. If not you can just jump right to the fringe if you'd like to as well. So let's pretend we're done our blanket. So what I want you to do is cut all the strands that are leading to the yarn balls if you have any that are still connected and remember just to follow that stitch pattern um, that is suggesting if you'd like to do it or you can just do whatever you want, right? No big deal. So you just have to throw this through a tapestry needle in order to fasten it off and you wanna do this with all your tails and just turn it and just go up underneath the stitch work just for about an inch or so be two inches and when you pull on it do not change the shape of your blanket. So just kind of reef on it a little bit and then go back and forth inside the same stitch work in a slightly different path a total of three times and it should be pretty much invisible. Okay and then once you do that you can safely cut that into the project. Now I told you in the beginning that I did not want you to create a knot so we're gonna, you have to literally do this with the tapestry needle in order to secure those and therefore you don't end up with a honking knot <laughs> uh, right on the edge, right? So you can just, just bear those into the same color line. So don't start putting this color through the blue because you'll see it. And just pull it through and you're gonna go back and forth the total of three times once again. So once that's in you can do that. So you wanna do that with all your tails and so I'll leave that with you and I'll be right back in just a moment so I have a nice clear palette to work with. So I just wanna do that and you wanna get rid of the starting tail as well in order to do that as well. So let's pretend you wanna do a border to it. Again optional. So just put your yarn on there. So in the corners just put in three single crochets. So just attach it first and chain one and put three single crochets into a corner. That'll allow it to turn. And then you just have to equally space then your single crochets going up the side. Now when the yarn colors are carrying, like they are in just a second from now, right here, see that blue is carrying? What you wanna do is you wanna still go into the stitch work but make sure that blue line is still above it so that it gets stuck underneath the stitches so it's not so obvious. All right, so it's more hidden than anything. You can probably do a better job than that. And then just in the corners again, just three single crochets. So that's something you can do for yourself if you want to. And what I would think about doing on the tops and the bottoms, just maintain. So come into the space and then to the top of the crochet for the next and then to the space to the next and etc. So just fill in those spaces and then just use the single crochets in between so you have a more solid border. So you can do that all the way around if you want to. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the fringe in just a moment for now. So when you come all the way around you just wanna slip stitch it to the first single crochet that you started with and then again using your tapestry needle just go back and forth behind the stitch work 
in order to do that. So I don't need to show you that again. And so just go in, turn it to the back side and just go back and forth on the one side. If you go into the back hump you will get the spacing. So if you don't want that then what you can do is that you can go into a regular stitch work. So that's up to you on how you would like to approach it. To me it's not a deal breaker but to you it could be. So if you would like it more solid then you have to change your approach on the beginning chain. So um, what I'm gonna do is demonstrate how to do the fringe next. So let's demonstrate on how to do the fringe. So what I would do is put a tape measure down on the table and what we're looking for is about 12 inches. And you're going to use the solid color or whatever color you decide to do and then you're just gonna say boom 12 inches. Pinch and then pull and then boom. So I stopping where the strand runs out here and then I pinch and then I boom there is my three strands of 12 inches long. So you'll notice that it will kind of expand and contract a little bit. So what you can just do is that that's three strands right there all done at the same time. So instead of laying it out and then cutting you can just lay it out 12, pinch, boom and boom. Okay, so that's how you could create that. Now when you go to attach the fringe you have to favor the good side of the project. So you have to determine what is the good side. Don't worry about cutting those loops that you have. So just keep it equal and then you can get this rid of. So you just have to equally space them along the tops or the bottoms. So I haven't woven in the end. So I'm gonna say this is the good side because of the border that I did. So what I want to do is just start at the top and the good side's facing up and what I want to do is bring the hook from the back of it so that it pops out to the good side. This matters and I'll show you why in a second. Now grab this yarn and fold it in half and put it onto the hook and pull through. And you're gonna pull through enough that you can get your fingers through here so that you can split it. And you're gonna put this through. Do you see this cross beam here? It will go across and it will appear on the front side of the work. So if you go in and you have loose ones so just pull on this and everything should kind of come in back and balance. There you go, got it. And so what's gonna happen is that that cross knot is gonna be on the front side so in the back it looks like this. So you just gotta be conscientious of that. I ran a stitch along once and I put it on the back side by accident so I had to refilm. So just coming up from the underside and I just skipped one. You can skip as many as you want to and pull through just enough to get my fingers in and then pull. And then what I would do is just kind of damp block this and get them a little damp and just lay it down and just fold it out like this. Okay and then what you're going to do is that you're going to take your scissors and right where you think it's gonna be long enough you will trim and this will automatically cut out those loops all at the same time. So you'll do the whole way across exactly the way I'm showing what I just showed you and then you're gonna run your scissors up the whole side and therefore all of your fringe then should be the same length. So this is, would be how you do the fringe. So this is the Twist and Weave Crochet Blanket by Yarnspirations.com. Hopefully you enjoy and you're gonna have some fun colors options with this and your approach can be unique just like you. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.